When you're a kid, you've got all the time in the world to play your favourite video games, and so how long they take to complete barely factors when selecting a title. Once you grow up, however, you find that you have less and less time to do the things you love, and so gaming sessions have to be carefully slotted in between boring adult stuff like going to work and hoovering your flat. Fortunately, not every game out there takes days and days to finish, and there are a number of titles that can be completed in less time than it takes to do your laundry depending on how much laundry you have, of course. For this list, we're taking a look at some brilliant video games whose run times can be counted in minutes rather than hours. This isn't a list of speedruns, but is rather a look at the titles that are naturally on the short side. We've consulted with the good folks over at HowLongToBeat.com, and according to their statistics, most players complete the main storylines of these games in 60 minutes or less. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 games you can finish in under an hour. Number 10. Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Now, you might be looking at the title of this one and thinking, Ben, you've made that up. I'd like to assure you, though, that Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk is, in fact, a real game. You can find it on the Steam Store. It costs less than an actual bag of milk. I assume we don't have bagged milk here in the UK. And it'll take you approximately 20 minutes to complete. According to the developer, Milk is an artistic manipulation with word and form first and a game second. The player takes on the role of a voice inside the head of a girl who's trying to buy milk and must choose dialogue options in response to what she's thinking. However, the girl is suffering from mental illness, and so even something as seemingly straightforward as going to the store becomes an insurmountable task. Unlike some other choice-based games, those presented in Milk don't have an impact on whether or not the girl is able to obtain her preferred dairy product, but instead give an insight into her psyche. The game does delve into the harrowing impacts of mental illness, and so won't be for everyone, but those who do play are in for an eye-opening experience experience. Number 9. Dagum by H.P. Lovecraft over the years, we've seen a number of terrific games inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, but most of them take hours to play through. If you're desperate for a bit of eldritch horror but are short on time, then we heartily recommend Dagon by H.P. Lovecraft. Dagon isn't so much a game as it is a narrative experience, recounting the story of a morphine-addicted man and his journey escaping from an Imperial German sea raider. Being a Lovecraft tale, Dagon is not simply a story of drifting on open waters in a lifeboat, and it's not long before the man encounters strange surroundings and nightmares creatures. If you're looking for a title that's full of action, puzzles, or choices with serious consequences, then Dagon isn't going to be the one for you. If you're after a genuinely spooky experience that will immerse you in the world of Lovecraft, though, then you've come to the right place. Dagon by HP Lovecraft will generally take players around half an hour to complete, and if you can find another game that packs as much dread into such a short period of time and doesn't cost a single penny to play, well, I'll eat my hat. Number 8. Donkey Kong Though Donkey Kong may be older than the vast majority of us here at Team Triple Jump, it's still a game with the power to entertain for about 20 minutes. Still, they're an action-packed 20 minutes that gave birth to some of gaming's most iconic characters. Donkey Kong was first released in Japanese arcades in July 1981 and made its way to North America and European shores shortly after. The game stars a little-known protagonist by the name of Jumpman, a hero who would later become known as Mario, or Mario's dad, depending on who you talk to. The player's goal is to platform their way up multiple construction site-themed levels in order to save the damsel in distress, Lady, later named Pauline all whilst avoiding the various obstacles that are thrown their way by the eponymous Donkey Kong. This was the very first example of a game using the damsel in distress trope, which many other titles duplicated in the years to come. Being an arcade title, the idea was that players would be able to complete the game in a reasonably short time, and so those who pick up a copy of Donkey Kong will find that they're able to finish it in less time than it takes to dig their old NES out of the attic. Number 7. Star Fox 2 we're sticking with the classics for a moment as we turn our attention to Star Fox 2, a bite-sized title with a bit of a tumultuous history. The story of Star Fox 2 follows on from the series' first game. Following his defeat, Andros returns to the Lilat system in order to launch an all-out attack on Corneria, and it's up to the Star Fox team to put an end to his dastardly plans. The game originally went into development shortly after work was finished on the European version of Star Fox, but by the time it was nearing completion, Nintendo were concerned that it wouldn't measure up to the titles on the PlayStation and Sega Saturn, so it was cancelled. Beta versions were leaked in the following years, but it wasn't until the Super NES Classic console launched in 2017 that Star Fox 2 finally saw release. When fans of the series finally got round to playing Star Fox 2, most agreed that it was great, with many critics lauding the sequel for its inventiveness and for building upon the work of its predecessor. Still, forcing players to wait 22 years for a 45-minute game, taking the 
make of it there, aren't we, Nintendo? Number 6. Speed Dating for Ghosts Have you ever wondered what it would be like to try to commune with the dead but are afraid of picking the wrong spirit? If so, then you should try Copy Chaser Games Speed Dating for Ghosts, the dating sim with a spooky twist. Throughout the half-hour title, players get to meet a variety of different spirits and hold conversations with them. Depending on what choices they make, they can learn all about the ghosts' backgrounds, how they died, and more importantly, how they lived. The game begins by completing a speed round, where players get to enjoy a couple of rounds of short interactions with a handful of the spooks. From there, they get to choose their favourite and go on a fully-fledged date, where they'll find out even more about their chosen and Phantom. On the surface, speed dating for ghosts may seem like a shallow dating sim, but the care and attention given to ensuring each of the ghosts has their own unique personality makes it so much more than that. Though a single run may only take half an hour or so to complete, players will find themselves going back to the game time and time again so that they can delve deeper into the stories of all of the spectres. Number 5. The Haunted Island, a frog detective game. You know, detective games are good and all, but don't you think that the likes of L.A. Noir would be a lot more fun if the characters were all anthropomorphic animals? If you share my desire for a game starring characters like Vol Phelps and Quack Kelso, then you should check out The Haunted Island, a frog detective game. The game begins when Frog Detective gets a call telling him that people have been hearing noises which they believe to be caused by a ghost. Upon arriving on the island, the residents inform him that the sounds are coming from a nearby cave, but that explosives are needed in order to access it. By conversing with the island, cast of interesting characters, players can collect the ingredients needed for the explosive device and unravel the mystery once and for all. The Haunted Island, a frog detective game, clocks in at a very reasonable 45 minutes, but in its short runtime it manages to pack in a great deal of intrigue, humour and heart. Though it may cost as much money as a fancy cup of coffee and last you approximately as long, we feel like The Haunted Island is a far more enjoyable way to spend your hard-earned cash. Plus, it won't upset your tummy afterwards. Number 4. Florence Relationships in your 20s can be difficult. Though some people meet the love of their lives immediately, most will have to experience a few relationships before finding the right person, and oh boy does it suck when you're with the wrong one. A game that perfectly captures those feelings is 2020's Florence, a tale about a 25-year-old woman who's trying to navigate life and love. Florence tells the story of well, Florence, a young woman who has become stuck in a rut. Her life is an endless cycle of waking up, going to work, then going to bed so she can do it all over again the next day. That is, until she meets Krish, a cellist who changes her outlook on life. The game plays out like an interactive comic book, with each panel giving a snapshot of Florence's life. Players are tasked with helping Florence to complete various activities, from brushing her teeth to eating dinner. Florence is a heartwarming and at times heartbreaking experience. Players will be drawn in by the beautiful graphics and calming music and will remain hooked for the game's short runtime by Florence's compelling story. If you're not crying by the end, then you're much stronger than I am. Number 3. Dr. Langeskov, the Tiger and the Terribly Cursed Emerald, a Whirlwind Heist Here we have another example of a title that sounds like it was made up by our writer, but once again we assure you that Dr. Langeskov, the Tiger and the Terribly Cursed Emerald, a Whirlwind Heist is a very real video game. According to the game's description on Steam, which concludes with the person writing it sacking the whole thing off and going on strike, it's the hottest summer on record and all across Europe valuable objects are disappearing. Without spoiling too much from Dr. Landreskov and friends, we can advise you to not expect any kind of detective work or cat burglary. And also, I have no idea how to pronounce Dr. Landreskov. I'm assuming that's right? Question mark? If you're a fan of the Stanley Parable and got a kick out of the Humor in the Portal series, then you're sure to have a fantastic time with Dr. Landreskov et al. The side-splitting script is delivered with expert comedic timing by Simon Amstel, who takes the player on a bizarre yet hilarious journey. Most players will complete the game in under 25 minutes, but they're a hugely entertaining 25 minutes. What's more is that the game is free of charge on Steam, so even if the title doesn't tickle your funny bone, at least you won't be out of pocket. You might get eaten by a tiger, though. Number 2. Emily is away. If you grew up in the early 2000s, you probably spent a good amount of time chatting to your friends and classmates via an online messaging service like MSN. For our younger viewers, MSN was a bit like WhatsApp, only you were judged harshly for which emojis you used in your display name and which icon you chose. 
Team Rubber Duck for life. Emily is Away takes place via a fictional chat client and sees the unnamed protagonist trying to forge a relationship with the eponymous Emily throughout high school and college. The player is given a number of choices during the game that will impact their connection with Emily, with future interactions hinging on the responses the player gives to her messages. The gameplay itself is very straightforward. Each time Emily sends a message, the player simply needs to choose a response from three different options. What the game lacks in high-speed car chases and thrilling gunfights, it more than makes up for in the characterization of Emily and the story that unfolds before the player's very eyes. What's most impressive, though, is that it manages to spin such a compelling narrative over a runtime of just 40 or so minutes, which frankly is a rookie number when compared to the amount of time we millennials spent on MSN every evening. Number 1. Kirby's Dreamland we couldn't possibly produce a list of brilliant but short video games without giving a nod to the title that gave us one of Nintendo's most iconic characters. Indeed, Kirby's Dream Land, originally released in 1992 for the Game Boy, clocks in with a runtime of around 45 minutes and introduced the world to the jolly pink globule of fun that is Kirby. Kirby's very first outing is set in the titular Dreamland, a country populated by peaceful folk who spend their days using their magical sparkling stars to work and play. All of that changes, though, when King DDD swoops down from his castle on Mount DDD and steals all of the Dreamlanders' food and sparkling stars. With the population facing starvation, Kirby volunteers to take on King DDD and save the day. Day Day. Gameplay-wise, players can expect a side-scrolling platformer that was pretty typical for the time period. Kirby can move left and right, jump, fly, and attack enemies by inhaling them. Though fans of more modern Kirby titles might find Dreamland a bit basic by comparison, it's still a fun way to spend the best part of an hour. If you're in the market for a short but cutesy and whimsical platform gaming experience, then you could do far worse than to seek out Kirby's Dreamland. 